Okay, a little bit more on the stones. And um, full disclosure, I have done a little bit of refining off camera. Sometimes it's hard to actually focus and talk <laughs> at the same time. But I'll tell you what um, the basics of what I've been doing. I've been um, refining a little bit. I have gotten out my uh, Mars Stadler Mars Lumograph Black uh, 8B, which is helping me to um, really start getting some of the darker values to to make sense. Um, I've been adjusting shape a little bit. I've been adjusting the shading a little bit. You'll notice when I when I start getting to this darker phase, I am more um, shifting to my fingers. While I am sort of using this dark marker to um, refine and darken, there's there's still you know there's still um, room to adjust shape and things, shape and stuff. But for the top stone, I um, I just tried making it seem more like this image. Um, I'm I'm not sure if this is really helping me or not, but um, to some extent it is to sort of see how. Um, just another example of how shadow would. Fall. It's, it's, it's not the exact same lighting situation, but close enough to help. Um, I won't leave this um, real outline sort of idea there, but um, I'll get to that in a really sort of final light stage. But on this uh, middle stone, I could see just some of the contours of shadows were sort of coming around like this, especially on this front part. There's kind of a really kind of a little triangle. That gets a little darker. It's moving away from light. And this part right here where where there's a sort of a, a subtle a subtle plane change in the stone is um, where it will get a little bit darker. And I, I haven't even um, I haven't even shaded in the, the cast shadows really. I'm still just kind of playing with the form shadows. All the shading stuff is is more of a drawing too and, and really kind of understanding three dimensional f structure as opposed to two-dimensional shape. I'm going to um, shade in some 
Seems like cast shadow. There it is. That seems to want to go higher. Um, doing a little bit of that, a little bit of blending, darkening with my pencil and blending. The blending helps sort of um, tone down the, the degree of um, value change, which makes the, uh, the turning of the shape a little more subtle. I, um, I also have my Queen X that I'm going to get out here. Let's, um, let's see about really kind of trying to make this stone get darker as it, as it really just moves more and more away from the light to the point where it touches the bottom stone. say I'm gonna sketch in a little a line for a, um, a shape for a cast shadow I'm not sure it's exactly this but um, kind of using a little bit of a combination of this what's happening under these two and what you're going to find is cast shadow as, um, as it's closer to the object that's casting it the line of the shadow is going to be sharper and as um, the shadow gets farther and farther away depending on the light source the line will get more and more fuzzy um, it's fun to look at um, in the late afternoon to look at shadows cast by trees and towards the trunk of the tree there's a really nice crisp line and as it keeps moving further and further away the shadow that is the line keeps getting more and more diffuse just because more more light is coming at it from is getting bounced it's reflected off of other things and finding its way into that Um, I need to make a, a choice here of who's going to be the darker, the cast shadow or the bottom of the stone. And, and indeed, I'm going to make it the cast shadow. So I am pressing in pretty hard with this pencil. And trying to um, fade it out a little bit as I get further away. The three-dimensional contour of the bottom stone is, is, is quite interesting. When we get into um, cross contours that's going to sort of help help that much more kind of understand how these things turn in, in space one of the other um, as things I I saw on the on the bottom stone was 
catchment area that I think probably was flattened out so that there was a little bit a little bit less light hitting it from up from above down here I'm darkening it um, and that may be more of a uh, artistic choice than anything else. Let's get in some nice of this cast shadow. I do like to, um, it, it, it will be harder to um, erase this very hard to erase these dark the dark cast shadows so I do like to um, wait till I'm pretty sure of what what's happening where I want to put them down there's there's things you can do to fix things if they go too awry. That's kind of fun. that it really kind of comes down out like this in the shape of the uh, the stone list it's kind of interesting um, without getting too into uh, involved lighting and shading just so you at least have heard of this idea, there's the idea of what's called a, uh, a core shadow. And it's, it's a result of light coming from a main light source. And um, lightening the object. And also, often there's a situation of um, reflected light um, being reflected. <laughs> well, that would make sense now, wouldn't it? Um, and where that shows up is more um, in oval uh, circular shapes down down underneath here, if, you, if this is probably the best example out of all of these. If you look at this middle stone over here, you can see where there's shadow that's turning away because of the form is turning away from the light. But at some point down here, it starts lightening up because light is bouncing off of whatever surface this is and reflecting back up into there to create reflected light. I'm going to um I'm going to try to emulate that a little bit here. It is kind of a combination of not getting it's it can be so fun and tempting to play with reflected light that it's easy to kind of try to make it as light or lighter as the, the part that's in direct light. But that is not how it works, said the snooty artist. <laughs> but um, 
to make it a little bit more clear that that's light. This area right here is lighter and there's some light getting reflected up. We could either erase back or we could make it a little clear about what is darker. And that is kind of the idea of the core shadow. It's kind of a shadow that's getting squeezed by um, what's well, a part of the, the um, form shadow. It's kind of in a way getting squeezed by direct light and reflected light. I'm just kind of uh, just kind of uh, making that up a little bit, just kind of seeing how that feels. I did sort of lose that triangle, which I was liking. So while I can, this this part of the of the stone would make sense down here if it was a little bit lighter in value than the darkest part of the shadow. It still would not be as as light as, as I think I probably said, as the, um, the side of the, the part of the stone that's receiving direct light. I'm gonna um, try to really nail down this part too. This is gonna be interesting, sort of imagining how that would be getting cast. It can kind of tell over here how it's, this I think is probably the cast shadow. Um, very, um, very soft edge. Um, but once again, it's gonna, I'm gonna define the middle stone with this really dark tone. Treating that as the cast shadow coming from so that was um, okay to start with and to help help that make uh, be clearly Dark. Once again, I'm going to kind of come back in here and pull out a little bit of pull. That's a good term. It's, it seems odd when we're using an eraser, but um, that's kind of what it is. This is probably not the most thrilling uh, video to watch, but um, the shading part is so fun and it can be really kind of therapeutic. <laughs> um, but it really, it mostly has to do with 
how quickly something changes or something changing from a light tone to a dark darker tone how much how how intense the change is from sort of light to sort of dark or sort of light to very dark and the speed at which that transition transition happens and when I say the speed I don't know maybe the rate is, is a good way of saying it for example under here where the cast where the shadow is being cast goes from a, a, a light to a dark dark immediately but someplace like up here it goes from pretty light to darker but a little bit more gradual not as gradual as over here. I might actually change that a little. Mm. So the bottom, the bottom stone needs um, help. I'm going to try to kind of reestablish what I think it's kind of doing uh, cross contour wise um, and cast shadow wise but what I think I'm going to do pretty darn soon here is say that is plenty for this video relax a little bit can be kind of a lot of focus. It's fun focus, but can make you uh, ready for a break. There's always a easy, uh, easy to sort of visually morph these into a potato. So that's uh, always a little interesting, fun challenge to see if you can make it read as a stone. Okay, that's enough for that for now, he said, and then kept drawing. I am, uh, it is time to uh, do a little stepping back, I will say, and uh, make sure that I'm getting a good sense of it from, from farther back and not just all up, all up close. It is very fun to just sort of see how subtle changes in in darkness and the values. Will all of a sudden pop out and just read as creating a three dimensional form. It's pretty cool.
Oh, that's right. I was going to take a break, huh? Okay, break. Come along. <laughs> 